أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم واتقوا يوما لا تجزي نفس عن نفس شيئا ولا يقبل منها عدل ولا تنفعها شفاعة ولا هم ينصرون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد ونسكين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In this section we're just going to talk about our children and the relationship we're going to have with them in the akhirah after this life is done Allah tells us to be cautious of a day وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا Protect yourselves from the harms of a day لا تجزي نفس عن نفس شيئا Where no person is going to be able to compensate, pay for uh, any other person وَلَا يُقْبَلُ مِنْهَا عَدَلْ And no, nor will any kind of, uh, uh, you can call it ransom, be accepted. وَلَا تَنْفَعُوهَا شَفَاعَةً And nobody will be able to come and make a case for anybody else. If there's one thing our parents are for us is shafi'a. In other words, my child didn't do that. No, no, no. Your kid's about to be kicked out of school, what do you do? You go to the school and say, no, 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 my kid is a good kid. He's a good, give him another chance. Take it easy on him, right? You come and defend your child. Mothers fight over the innocence of their children at the playground. That's what they do. When in the joint family system in many parts of the world, where the brothers live together and their wives live together and the kids live together, the sisters, the, 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 the wives fight each other about, your kid did this. No, my kid never does that. My kid is actually perfect. It's your kid that's the shaitan. And then they go, go after it because they do shafa'a. That's shafa'a. You come to defend your child no matter what. Allah says on judgment day, nobody will make a case for anybody else. We're not going to care for them and they're not going to care for us. يَوْمَ تَجِدُ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مُحْضَرًا Every person is going to find whatever they did and right, present it right in front of them. Last night I was driving with my two daughters, the older ones, and I said to them, you know girls, on judgment day, I don't know if I'm going to do good or not, but you're not going to be able to say I'm with Abba. Like if I do well, and Allah says, okay, you can go to Jannah, you're not going to be able to say, I'm with him. Can I go too? No, you can't. And if you make it to Jannah, I'm not going to be able to say, hey, hey, I know, I know Waliya, I know Husna, can I go with them? It's not going to work. We're going to be disconnected. The only, way, the only time we can meet is after we make it to Jannah. But the way to Jannah, we won't be together. We have to be apart. It's pretty scary, huh? I'm like, yeah, that's pretty scary. Like, yeah, that's why you have to have your own reasons to go into Jannah. I will not be your reason. You will not be my reason. We have to have our own iman, our own understanding, our own good deeds that we can show to Allah, our own forgiveness, so we can make it to Jannah. Don't forget that. Right, okay, Abba. I have these weird conversations with my girls sometimes, just in the car, just so they know. That's not, and I don't want them to sit and watch a video. I want to have a conversation. Because, you know, when you, when you have a conversation, it's natural. Right? It, didn't, it wasn't like mentally prepared, oh, there's going to be something about Islam. And then they just kind of zone out. Or it's going to be a lecture. If it's a conversation, it's more real. It's so much more real. So that's why, yeah, a lot of you, for example, you have your kids watch my stuff. Which is cool. Much more important, you talk to your kids. Much more important. Or actually, after you watch stuff yourself, just have a conversation. Casually, over lunch over dinner, just on a road trip, just talk a little bit about the Akhirah. And how we want to stay as a family together in the Akhirah too. We don't want to, we don't want to be apart in the Akhirah. And here's how we can be together. Okay? So, تَوَدُّ لَوْ أَنَّ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَهُ أَمَدًا بَعِيدًا وَيُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ نَفْسَهُ وَاللَّهُ رَعُوفٌ بِالْعِبَادِ Allah says, he, wants, he warns you that you will see your deeds on Judgment Day and you will wish there's a huge distance between you and your deeds. Meaning you will have to go individually. Everybody's going to be by themselves. Allah Azza wa Jal describes on Judgment Day the kind of people who make it to Jannah and they're with their family. They, they, they fulfill the promise they made to Allah and they didn't break any part of the agreement. 
They, keep, they kept joined what Allah commanded to keep joined. They kept family relations. They weren't mean to their, their cousins or anybody else. They made sure that they don't abandon any member of the family. وَيَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ وَيَخَافُونَ سُوءَ الْحِسَابِ and they continued to fear their master, and they were afraid of the worst kind of accounting reckoning on that day. How are we able to say that we fear the punishment if we don't even talk about it? It has to become a part of our conversations. It's not a part of our conversations, it only comes up when you're listening to a lecture, there's a problem. The akhirah is real. It should be as real and relevant a conversation as what you discuss about what's for dinner or about your favorite cartoon, or whatever. This should be a real conversation with our kids. The akhirah should feel like a reality. وَالَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا اِبْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِمْ And the people who were patient, only seeking the pleasure, the face of their master. وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ And they established the salah. وَأَنْفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيًا and they spent from whatever we had provided them secretly and openly. وَيَدْرَؤُونَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ السَّيِّئَةِ And every time they did something bad, they, they removed it by doing something good immediately. Allah is describing people that are going to Jannah. He's mentioned a few things so far, so I'll mention them again, so they're fresh in your mind. They fulfill their promises, they don't violate their promises, they keep the relations and they don't cut them, they're afraid of Allah, and they're really terrified of the worst kind of audit and accounting on Judgment Day. They're, they're, patient, pe they're patient people for Allah's sake, not for anybody else's sake. They're not patient and say, you know, for your sake I was patient, but I can't take it anymore. No, 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 they're patient for Allah, which means it's endless for them. They can maintain their patience, because it's not for the sake of someone else. And then... They, they were good with their prayers, they spent when, they, when it was easy or hard, open and, and, and openly and, and, and quietly, secretly. And they did do bad things, but what happened when they did bad things? They immediately followed up with good deeds. If you do something messed up, you immediately follow up with something extra good. أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ عُقْبَ Those are the people that get the eventual home, the final home. جَنَّاتُ عَدْنٍ The gardens of Adn. يَدْخُلُونَهَا اللَّهُمَّ أَدْخِلْنَا فِي الْجَنَّةِ you know, they're going to be entering into it. وَمَنْ صَلَحَ مِنْ آبَائِهِمْ وَأَزْوَاجِهِمْ وَذُرِّيَاتِهِمْ They're going to be entering the Jannah, the, the gardens. And they're going to be entering it with whoever was good among their parents and their, their spouses and their children. وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يَدْخُلُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ بَابِ and angels are coming, entering at them from every door. Angels are coming and welcoming your entire family, the parents, the children, the wife, everybody's together. Salamun alaykum, peace upon you. So the angels are saying salam to you. Bima sabartum, because you are very patient. Fani'ma uqbadar, what an awesome home. Where the, 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 the Jannah service, if you will, the, the people greeting you, the greeters are the angels themselves. And are greeting the entire family. We want to go with our entire family into Jannah. That's what, that's what we should desire. As one of the joys of Jannah is that we should be able to go all together. May Allah enter us and our families into paradise. وَلَقَدْ جِئْتُمُونَ فُرَادًا Allah says, You have come to us on Judgment Day all alone. كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً Just like we created you the first time, you were all alone. Nobody else was with you. وَتَرَكْتُمْ مَا خَوَّلْنَاكُمْ This is the part I really wanted to highlight. You have left all the wrappings that we put around you. Takhweel in Arabic is to wrap something. To wrap something. Now imagine we, the, the ruh that Allah created me with, that ruh, He put it inside the stomach of my mother. So my ruh was surrounded by my body. And that body was surrounded by the stomach of my mother. And then I came out and my, my life was surrounded by my family, by my home, by, by my, first by my clothes. Then by those who are close to me, they surrounded me. There was like a, they were like a cover for me. Then the house I lived in was a cover for me. Then the city I lived in was a cover for me. Then the continent I lived in, the world I lived in was a cover. These are wraps. We're wrapped in one thing after the other after the other. And judgment day comes and all these wraps are removed. It's just you. All the things you were wrapped in are removed. And you, just you are exposed. You know? تَرَكْتُمْ مَا خَوَّلْنَاكُمْ وَرَاءَ ظُهُورِكُمْ Behind your backs. وَمَا نَرَى مَعَكُمْ شُفَعَاءَكُمْ And we don't see anybody that's making a case for you. Nobody's coming and saying, go easy on this one, please. He's not that bad. Nobody's coming for you. 
Allah Azza wa Jal makes that, regard, that, that comment about these people. الَّذِينَ زَعَنْتُمْ أَنَّهُمْ فِيكُمْ شُرَكَاء Those you thought might come and help you. What is Allah teaching us? Don't think anybody will come to help you on Judgment Day. You don't think that. The only shafa'a we expect is the shafa'a of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And even that is for those who earn it. Because there's two kinds of things that happen from Rasulullah on Judgment Day sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Either he makes a case for you or he makes a case against you. So there's two things, one or two things will happen. So we, we are not guaranteed which one we get. We have to earn it. And so even that, we don't just, it's not a blind thing, oh, the messenger will come and say, he's with me and we'll be fine. Because even in this dunya, that's akhirah, it's harder to make a case for someone in akhirah. Even in this dunya, I already told you, if they turn away, فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ Allah, Allah is enough for me. The messenger is willing to turn away from you, even in this dunya, he's commanded. So don't blindly believe that the shafa'ah will come and save you. That's, it's not a correct reading of the Qur'an or of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And so this idea of us being separated from our previous surroundings, Allah compa- compa- or compares it in the next ayah to, إِنَّ اللَّهَ فَالِقُ الْحَبِّ وَالنَّوَى Allah tears open the seed and the pit. It tears, so something was, life was inside there, but it couldn't stay. And it tore open and it came out. Just like that, you and I will come out on judgment day. Then of course Allah says about Judgment Day, يَوْمَ تَأْتِي كُلُّ نَفْسٍ تُجَادِلُ عَنْ نَفْسِهَا The day on which every person will come trying to argue and make a case for who? Themselves. نَفْسِهَا وَتُوَفَّ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا عَمِلَتْ And everybody will be given whatever they did, not whatever they argued, whatever they actually did. وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ They won't be wronged. Allah Azza wa Jal tells us, and this is the, these are the ayat I'll spend a little bit of time on. These are ayat that belong to Surah Al-Baqarah and they're probably the most important in understanding how we start thinking that the connections we have in this life, especially the strong bond of parents and family, are going to, they're the strongest connection, they don't, they'll never go away. Allah Azza wa Jal describes in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ there are some people who take competitors other than Allah. They start loving those competitors like they should be loving Allah. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ But those who have iman, they have the most intense love for Allah. What we should learn here is, our, I love my wife, I love my children, I love my parents. I love them. But, my love for them is based on my love for Allah. Is rooted in my love for Allah. They're actually gifts of Allah to me. They're gifts of Allah to me. And my love of them is not unconditional. The love of an animal for his child is unconditional. The love of me for my child is conditional. It's conditional. You know, there's a point that comes in iman, and may Allah not make us face that point. There were some people among the Sahaba who had children who became enemies of Islam. They became enemies of Islam. They wanted to kill the Prophet So the, the father is a Sahabi, and the son is a Shaitan. Or the other way around. The son is a Sahabi, and the father wants to kill the Messenger So the, now, you, But it's your father, you love your father. Naturally we would argue we love our father, but in this case, you know what happened? لَا تَجِدُ قَوْمًا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ you will not find a group of people that can love anyone who opposes and becomes an enemy to Allah and His Messenger. Even if they're their dads, even if they're their children. You can't find it. You can either have iman, love of Allah and His Messenger, or love of your, your father who hates Allah and His Messenger. You can't combine both. But in that case particularly, because they were specific enemies to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now you might find that situation with some parents, or some children. The children have rebelled. Don't jump the gun and say, my child has become an enemy to Allah and his messenger. Oh, hold on there. Hold on a second. The enemies to Allah and the messenger were clear at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The enemies to Allah and the Messenger today, unless they are preachers that preach against Islam or something, unless they're taking the mic and bashing the Messenger of Allah or something, if they're just the average non-Muslim who doesn't know much about Islam and has a bad opinion of Islam, then you don't use that ayah and say, I have no love for my father. (laughs) You don't do that. That's immature use of the Qur'an. It's abuse even of the Qur'an. You don't do that with your children. 
A mother came to me, I keep repeating the story because it scarred me. A mother came to me, very devout Muslimah, and said, you know, I have something in my heart. My son, he's completely left Islam. He just doesn't pray, he's drinking alcohol, girls, partying, everything. I don't know what to do. I have no love for him. I, I don't even make dua for him anymore. And I said, lady, I know you're older than me and stuff. You better make dua for him. And she said, I can't, he's so bad. And I said, I know he's bad, but he's your son. You can't give up on him. You have to make dua for him. But she said, what about Nuh alayhi salam? And I said, when you're finished with 950 years of patience, and Allah reveals an ayah to you saying, no, no, he's not your family, then you can quote Nuh alayhi salam. Until then, you don't give up on your family. You don't do that. The Prophet ﷺ did not curse Abu Lahab. That's his uncle. He didn't curse him. Allah did. Tabbat yada Abi Lahab in Watan. The Prophet didn't do that. He can't give up on his family. Allah can tell him, okay, it's done. They're out. That he can do. We don't give up on our family. And, so, and we don't because we know what's coming, judgment day. If you know the emergency of judgment day is coming and Allah has left the door to tawbah open until the moment of death, why would you give up on a loved one? You can't. You have to keep trying. You have to keep hope alive. Allah might bring them back. Subhanallah. So, in this ayah, uh, 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 this love has to be intense for Allah. But then, وَإِذْ تَبَرَّأَ الَّذِينَ اتُّبِعُوا مِنَ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوا Those who used to be followed are declaring that they have nothing to do with those who followed them. You and me, Allah forbid, if we were bad parents, and our children are saying, Dad, you never taught us about salat. We didn't need, you never cared, so we never cared. I know they have to answer for themselves, but they're coming after me too, on judgment day. Because they followed me. And they followed me. So trendsetters includes parents, because they trend, set the trend for their children. But parents are going to be on that day like, I have nothing to do with you. They will cut themselves off from those who followed them. الْعَذَابِ And both parents and children, both followers and followed are looking at the punishment. وَتَقَطَّعَتْ بِهِمُ الْأَسْبَابِ And all their relationships are cut. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوا And the people who followed them say, they will say then, لَوْ أَنَّ لَنَا كَرَّةً If we only had another chance. لَنَا تَبَرَّأَ مِنْهُمْ كَمَا تَبَرَّأُوا مِنَّا we would have cut ourselves off from them, just like they're cutting themselves off from us now. This, this, can, this ayah does not, is not limited to children, but it includes children. You might find yourself in a situation where your children are wishing to Allah on Judgment Day, I wish I never followed my parents. Don't be those kinds of parents. There's a section I didn't mention from the next time. There's a section I made of guidance from the Qur'an for parents. You know what it's called? Don't be this kind of parent. That's all it's called. Don't be this kind of parent. Here are things you and I should not be if Allah has honored us with parenthood. But anyway, وَتَقَطَّعَتْ بِهِمُ الْأَسْبَابِ And now all of them, the parents and the children, the followers and the followers are looking at the punishment of hellfire and Allah says, you know, كَذَلِكَ يُرِيهِمُ اللَّهُ أَعْمَالَهُمْ حَسَرَاتٍ عَلَيْهِمْ That's how Allah will show them their deeds and they'll be wishing things were different. Just regret, regret, regret. Oh, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? Why didn't I take it seriously? Why didn't I change my ways? Hasaratin Ali. Wamahum bi kharijina min al nar. They're not going to be coming out of the fire. Now the advice to the Muslims. And especially I took this down because as a parent I'm listening especially. Ya yuhal nas kulu mimma fil ardi halal and tayyiba. Eat halal. Eat halal. What is on the earth that is halal? And then Allah adds another quality, halal and what? Tayyiban. These are two different things. Halal may not be tayyib. Tayyib may not be halal. Allah wants us to eat that which is halal, tayyib. Healthy, good food. Just because it's halal, doesn't mean it's good. And a good, I don't mean good like tastes good. I mean unhealthy. I mean problematic for your, for your heart. Problematic for your stomach. Problematic for you, you know, your digestion, whatever. Eat good food. Halalan, tayyiban. Tayyiban. Wala tattabi'u khutuwati shaitan. Don't follow the footsteps of shaitan. 
we the halal the eating halal food halal consumption has a direct impact on what kind of children we're going to raise direct impact if you are earning haram money and buying zabiha chicken then it's still haram chicken you have to understand that if you're not earning halal money then I don't, I don't care how many times you checked the halal stamp or you went to the farm and checked if they drained the blood and all of that, it's still haram for you. You might as well be eating pork. Haram isn't just the meat you eat. That's the physical purity. The spiritual purity is that they come from halal sources. Halal rizq. And if our food is contaminated, spiritually or physically contaminated, then it is like eating poison. And it's like eating either physical poison or spiritual poison. And that spiritual poison will eat away at our, our iman and our children's iman. And if you eat haram, you will do haram. Eating haram is just one haram deed, but now it's inside you. The evil is inside you, and you will end up doing haram things. Watch it. Consume halal. Make sure your income is halal. Part of that is make sure you give zakat. Because zakat makes the rest of your money halal. If you don't give zakat, then the money is haram, then the food you're buying from it is haram. Problem. Give zakat. Take it very seriously. Don't be lazy about zakat. Calculate it properly. So, kulu mimma fil ardi halal and tayyiban. Now, finally, the irony. There's one irony. It's mentioned many times in the Quran. I only mention it once. Okay, because you'll see it yourself when you read Quran. You'll see it many, many times. Ibrahim alayhi salam tries his best to make sure his children follow his legacy. But who is around that makes sure that the children forget that legacy? Shaitan and his armies. But then when it comes to shirk, when it comes to kufr, when it comes to fahsha, disbelief, blasphemy, shamelessness, ignorance, and people, you ask them, why do you do these things? And they say, well, wajadna alayhi aba'ana. We saw our parents doing it. We're doing what our parents did. So when the parents follow Islam, shaitan comes and makes sure that the children will not follow. You have to go out of your way to make sure you're able to pass on the legacy. When the parents do shirk and kufr, and fahsha, then shaitan comes and encourages the children to listen to the parents and be just like them. And they get so committed to the legacy of their parents that when the truth comes, they say, no, 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 we can't leave the way our parents did things. Subhanallah. <laughs> there's a kind of loyalty to parents that shaitan encourages. And there's a kind of loyalty to parents that shaitan hates. That shaitan hates. When we get to the teaching section eventually, then you'll see the difference between these two. And how, how are we supposed to instill into our children something that is not satanic? How do we know? Are there bad practices that Muslims do that pass down to their next generation? Yep. Bad practices passed down to the next generation. And so many good practices from Islam are not passed down. And these are Muslim families. These are Muslim families. It happens. So that's actually shaitan winning. Because shaitan encouraged them to commit to the wrong thing and leave off the good thing. Because he swarmed and got to them. This is the irony of like being loyal to parents, subhanAllah. We have to be loyal to our legacy, but what is that legacy? Millat Abina Ibrahim alayhi salam. And by the way, Ibrahim alayhi salam's own legacy is to disobey his father. Hmm. When it comes to truth and falsehood, you only follow the truth. So we want to we wanna pass to our children a legacy that they don't obey us, but they obey the truth no matter what. No matter what, they're going to side with the truth. That is the real teaching we have to give to our children. We're continuing on the depiction of us and our children on Judgment Day. And one of the realities of that Allah mentions in the Quran is, Ya ayyuhal nas, ittaqu rabbakum, mankind. People, be cautious, careful of your master. Waqshaw yawman and be afraid of a day. La yajzi walidun an waladihi. No parent is going to be able to benefit his child. Wala mawludun huwa jazin an walidihi. Nor will any child be the one to benefit his parent. Parents will not benefit children. Children will not benefit parents. Nobody's going to aid anybody else. Shay'a, in any way, shape, or form. Inna wa'ad Allahi haqq, the promise of Allah is true. So don't be deluded by this. I'm repeating something I mentioned before. So many parents thinking their children are their ticket to Jannah. 
So they don't have to be any good. And I told you the correct understanding of that is, if you have already earned Allah's forgiveness and Jannah, then your children will benefit you. You don't do anything, and your children are awesome, that doesn't help you at all. Ibrahim alayhi salam, being, being who he is, does not benefit Azar. It doesn't benefit Azar. Nuh alayhi salam, being who he is, does not benefit his son. Child cannot benefit father. Father cannot benefit child. It's not going to happen. Allah even put the munafiqoon, as I mentioned, in the same category as the kuffar. لَن تُغْنِيَ عَنْهُمْ أَمْوَالُهُمْ وَلَا أُولَادُهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا they're not, their children and money will not benefit hypocrites. Hypocrites will not be benefited that way. So Allah here says, no father will benefit child, no child will benefit father. And then Allah goes on to say, and Allah knows what kind of kids you have. إِنَّهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ السَّاعَةَ Allah alone has knowledge of the hour. وَيُنَزِلُ الْغَيْثِ and, and knows the, He's the one that sends the rain down. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْأَرْحَامِ And He knows what's inside the wombs. He knows what's inside the bellies of the mothers. وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ مَا تَكْسِبُ غَدًا And no, nobody knows what they're going to earn tomorrow. وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتُ And nobody knows where they're going to die, which place they're going to die in. In Allah عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ No doubt Allah is alim, is all knowledgeable, and He's the one that has full news. In other words, who's born where and dies where is up to Allah. But one thing's for sure, you will not be benefiting anybody else. Be very clear about that. On Judgment Day, you have a scene of Jahannam. There are people in hellfire, and hellfire is crammed. Jannah is described as wasi', vast, endless. Jahannam is described as crammed. There's no space. People are just crammed in there. Hada fawjun muqtahimun ma'akum. This is a group of people that are just squished along with you. La marhaban bihim. They're not welcome here. Innahum salun nar. There's no welcome for them there. They're the ones being entered into fire. Bal antum. And now, so there's another older generation. There's an older generation already in hellfire. A new younger generation of those people is being thrown into hellfire on top of them. So the people in hell that are the elders say, La marhaban bihim. <laughs> we don't want these people. We don't want them. We don't want them in here. There's no space for them here. Antum qaddam tumuhu lana. Fabi'is al qarar. You're the ones that, so the ones on top say, you're the ones that came before us. You're the ones who the reason we're here. What a horrible place to be. قَالُوا رَبَّنَا مَنْ قَدَّمَ لَنَا هَذَا فَزِدْهُ عَذَابًا ضِعْفًا فِي النَّارِ They say, Ya Allah, whoever came before us in this, meaning who, whoever was the reason we're here. They didn't raise us right, so we messed up too. Whoever they were, increase their punishment please. Punish them some more. Now instead of the, you know, on the one hand in Jannah, we are raising each other's ranks and they're making dua that the other's punishment gets worse. And they're cursing each other in the hellfire. Allahumma la taj'alna min ashab nar Allah says, لَن تَنْفَعَكُمْ أَرْحَامُكُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ your, your children, your arham, your wombs, your connections, your family relations, nor your children will not be benefiting you on the day of judgment. يَفْصِلُوا بَيْنَكُمْ The day of resurrection. A distance will be cast between you. وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ And you're going to be in full view. Allah is in full view of what you're up to. This is a very famous passage. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ The day on which a person will be running away from his brother. وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ He's going to be running away from his mom and his dad. وَصَاحِبَتِهِ and his, and his wife. Allah didn't say زَوْجِهِ زوج is any wife. Imra'ati is any wife. Sahibatihi is the wife he loves. The wife that he wants to spend time with. The wife that he doesn't leave alone. The wife that's doing anything, he says, hey, come sit over here. I'll spend some more time with you. That's sahiba. He's running away from his sahiba. Not just his zawja. Zawja is easy to go away. Sahiba is hard to go away from. He's running away from his sahibatihi. Wabanihi and his child. <coughs> Allah describes the, probably the, the toughest description of judgment day that I know of. <coughs> is Surah Al-Hajj. For parents. Allah says, يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا The day on which all of you will see it. تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ Every feeding mother. So the mother of a baby. Murdi'a is the mother of a baby, not the mother of a 20 year old. Not the mother of a 12 year old, the mother of a baby. She's still feeding him. تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ 
amma ardahat. She will drop every mother, every feeding mother will drop whatever she used to drop feed. Tadhalu means yani wala tubali bihi. She just drops it like it doesn't even exist. Allah didn't even say wala daha. He said amma ardahat. He didn't even say عَنِ الَّذِي أَرْضَعَتْ Not even الَّذِي مَا فِيهِ إِبْهَامْ يعني كَأَنَّهَا لَا تَعْرِفُ As though he does, she doesn't even know what she's holding in her hands. Day of Judgment comes and she drops her baby like she doesn't even know it. She doesn't even know it. You know when we drop our baby sometimes by accident? When the baby jerks the neck a little bit by accident? <gasps> That's what happens. <clears throat> the fathers are a little crazier with babies. And the mothers go, hey, 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 oh, wait, stop, stop, stop. His little baby's neck, his back, his this, his that. You know, the only way you can get the baby back from dad is his diaper is full. Okay, okay, take it back. <laughs> you can have him now. But on judgment day, the mother takes her infant child and drops it. And Allah did not limit that description to human beings. Any feeding animal, anything that feeds will drop. Amma ardahat, wa tada'u kullu dhati hamlin hamlaha. And every pregnant creature will have an early delivery, prematurely deliver, out of pressure. Hamlaha. What are nasa sukara? And you'll see people walking around drunk. Wamahum bi sukara. They're not going to be drunk at all. Walakinna adab Allahi shadid. The punishment of Allah is really intense. Judgment day will be when all of the relationships we know and love right now will be gone. We are simply human beings in front of Allah. You know, all, this, this ties back to how this story of humanity began. Human beings, when we started off, Allah created the arwah from the sulb of Bani Adam, from Adam alayhi salam in dhahrihi, from his back, in Surah Al-A'raf. All of us actually were created at the same time. We were all, all of our arwah were created at the same time. And so we are, our bodies are of different age. And we come some from the other, parent and child. But spiritually we're all the same. And judgment day will all be the same again. All these relationships between us will be gone, will be equal footing again. And then we will enter paradise. SubhanAllah. What, what an amazing like, reality to the, to, to the human being that is described on judgment day. The summary of what I wanted to describe about judgment day is just simply as follows. Yawm al-Qiyamah itself, nobody will be with family. You know why that's important to know? It's important to know because you're, you know, you, you ever have your child go on a road trip? I have. It's really hard to send your child on a road trip. You, all kinds of thoughts go in your mind. You know, field trip, the sign from the school, you have to sign the paper, the release form or whatever. Especially if it's far away, you're like, nope, you're not going. I have to stay there, you have to stay there by yourself? All night? No. I'm coming with you. So half the kids have the chaperones with them, the parents, right? There is a road trip that every one of us and every one of our children will have to take. And on this trip, we will all be alone. You don't think it's right for us to prepare our children for that trip? Our children, and even when they get, as they get older, they need to know this journey is coming. And in this journey, they'll have to rely on themselves. That is it. The only help will come from Allah. I will not be able to help you at all. You're just by yourself. And I hope you make it. Because if you make it, we can be reunited again. But while that's happening, I will be of no benefit to you, and you will be of no benefit to me. This is the reality of Qiyamah. And this is a reality we have to instill and remind our children, and remind and remind and remind and, there, and remind. Because I could tell you one thing about the Day of Judgment, for a fact. The Day of Judgment is easy to believe in. It's not hard to believe in it. But it's very hard to remember it. It's very hard to remember it. And people who believe in it don't act in a way that they remember it. If the people who remember Judgment Day, their behavior changes. People who only be believe in Judgment Day, their behavior doesn't change. Don't you believe in Yamul Kema? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Their behavior doesn't change. If you want your behavior to change, if you want your children's behavior to change, you have to be actively reminded of Judgment Day. This is something we have to actively remind ourselves. And let me give you the biggest proof of that. Qur'an is the most eloquent speech of Allah. It's the, there's no better speech than Qur'an. 
the most repeated topic in the Quran. The most repeated topic. Maybe, maybe a page, go, I don't know if a page even goes by in the Quran without mention of the afterlife. Without some reference to what's coming. It's, it's almost impossible. Why is Allah repeating it so, so, so much? Because human beings forget it so, so, so much. He's telling us that. Every time Allah mentions taqwa, every time He mentions taqwa, is taqwa what? Judgment day. You're protecting yourself from sin now, so you don't answer for it then. 200 something times Allah mentions taqwa. Just taqwa alone. Every time Allah mentions good deeds, bad deeds. Everything ties back to that day. And that day, every kulluhum atihi yawm al qiyamati fardan. You know? And then, wa im minkum illa wariduha. Oh my God, that ayah. Not only do we have to prepare our children for judgment day where they will be all on their own, we have to prepare ourselves and them. Allah says there is not a single person that will not pass over Jahannam. Everyone will have to pass over Jahannam. There are no exceptions. Surah Maryam. In minkum illa wariduha. You will have to pass over it. That's it. And we will cross over and then you, come, you get to Jannah. Why does Allah do that? Why doesn't He just take us straight to Jannah? He does that because he wants you to know what you escaped. He wants you to appreciate, Jannah will taste all the better when you realize where you are not. You know? At, you know, at, at, at when, when the air conditioning goes out and your room gets really hot, then you go outside and it's five times hotter, then you come back inside and say it's better. You stop complaining. <laughs> then it feels air conditioned all of a sudden. Jannah will feel amazing, but even more amazing when you realize what you just escaped. And that's, the, that's every human being has to experience. Truly appreciate what Allah saved you and me from. So Allah makes us pass over it, and every child, every, every one of our children, if they reach the age of adulthood before they die, is going to walk over it, and you and I will. It is not if it happens, it is when it, when it happens. We better prepare ourselves, we better prepare our children. That's why I brought this, this section up. This needs to be an active conversation for every parent.